This is some hardware that I used in another video. And the last video what I was showing was that when I broke the beam, I could show that the uh, Pi was recognizing that and I just printed a message showing that the beam was broken or not. But uh, yeah, that's, that's interesting, but what can we do with that? I mean, uh, how can we apply that somewhere else? And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make a counter. So it will show the number of times the beam is broken. And that can be used for counting people walking through a door, products moving down an assembly line, anything like that, where they're going to break the beam. And we want to know exactly how many pass through. So first of all, let's demonstrate how this works. And then we'll go look at the software, because the software is really the only difference between the last experiment and this one. Let's first start the program. There we have it running in the background and you can see when I break the beam I'll get one count. And if I break it twice I'll get two counts. But So I've gone through the beam three times. It'll count relatively fast. Let me put this in here and spin the disc through here. You can see it's really counting them up. I'm only updating about once a second, but I'm counting every time it goes through there. So if I if I zip through there ten times in one second, it shows up as ten counts, which it should, of course. So that's it. It's uh, an interesting little program could be very useful for different things. So let's go look at the software now and see how it's done. This is the software behind the hardware we were just looking at. And it's very similar to the last thing I just did. However, it got a couple twists in it in order to count. I wrote it for Python 3. It's going to count the number of times that that beam is interrupted that we talked about. Uh, my input is pin 7 and I used ground uh, pin 6. My IR photo diode is on pin 7 and I'll show you all this hardware at the end of the video. The infrared LED is on pin 11 and that's the thing supplying the light that the uh, photo diode is going to detect. We're going to import our GPIO library so that we have pin numbering and all that good stuff. We're going to import time so I can use the sleep function. Uh, we're going to use the board numbering system. I know a lot of people prefer the other, but I like the board numbering system. Uh, I'm going to set pin 11 to output and I'm going to set pin 7 to input. Uh, my, I'm going to define a counter variable and set it to zero. Just This is my number that I'm keeping track of. Let's go down a little bit. This little bit right here is the function that's going to detect, uh, it's going to upgrade the counter, update the counter whenever an interrupt is detected. And its name is counter plus and then the channel which is pin 7. I'm going to globalize counter and please don't scream, I know you're not supposed to use global but it works very well especially with interrupts and functions. Uh, if GPIO input channel which is 7 is greater than 0.5 it means the photodiode has been blocked and I need to count that, so I'm going to increment my counter by 1, otherwise I'm going to implement, in, increment my counter by 0, and yes, that's just for harmonic balancing, you know? I don't need that here, but I just put it in there. Also, if I wanted to put in an error checking statement to see if that ever happened, because it never should happen, I can easily do that. Okay, here's my GPIO add event detect, this is my interrupt, pin 7 over here. GPIO rising, callback is counter plus, so whenever there's an interrupt, it's going to execute this piece of code. And bounce time, it's not very important without, you know, hardware. This is electronic switching, so it's not so important, so I just set it to 3. GPIO output 11 is true. I'm going to turn on the IR LED. I'm going to go to sleep for a second and make sure that the LED comes on to full power so that I don't get a false hit. Then I'm going to come down here and execute for X in the range of 0 to 500. You could do while true and make it an infinite loop, but I just did it for 500 times. Then I'm going to print the count, which we saw earlier. Just show the count and then the number of times that something has been counted. And then I'm going to sleep for one second. You could make this one second much shorter and you could report more often, but I figured reporting once a second is okay for this demonstration. I'm going to execute this 
500 times in this case, you can make it again an infinite loop so it runs forever, but if you have a loop and it, when it's done, it'll fall out. I'll clean up my GPIO ports. In other words, I'm going to reset those ports, turn everything off, put them back to the way they were, and then I'm going to print done so I know the program is finished. And that's pretty much it for this. So this is a nice little counter program. It'll count people going by, wildlife passing a point, products on an assembly line, anything you need like that. Now, there's another program buried in here. If we, if we somehow timed how many events per second or per millisecond or something like that, then we could produce a tachometer. But I think I'll save that for another video. Well, I hope you found this useful and interesting in your Raspberry Pi experimentation.